Hello friends, today I'll be showing you how I made the doll for a cottage collab over on Instagram. If you liked the video please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing, thanks in advance. When I bought this doll she was already prepped and her ears had been chopped off. I took her head off and I decided to sew the ear holes shut so that I could reroute over them. I'm just using a regular sewing thread, making a crisscross and then weaving through those threads to give some stability to some hot glue I'll add in a minute. The glue isn't very hot right now so I'm able to use my fingers but I don't recommend doing this. I'm using the nozzle to soften the glue around the ears to try and make it as flush to the head as possible. I ordered this fibre for a different project but I kept seeing girls with beautiful pastel hair in cottagecore clothes so I decided to use it for this project. This was my first time working with natural fibre and I kind of regret doing a reroute but I wanted to show you how I did it in case you wanted to try. So I'm separating the locks into their separate curls. I just wanted to talk a little bit about reroute tools. These are the different ones I have. This is an X-Acto knife blade. This gold one is a reroute tool that came from a company. And these two black ones are hand drill chucks. Recently I prefer the hand drill chucks because you um, can push with the palm of your hand. The X-Acto knives sometimes kind of hurt my hands a little bit. I spread the top of the lock into manageable pieces and then rerouted the pieces all next to each other so that the curl doesn't break up. I'm finding it easier to kind of roll the hair a little bit to get it to go into the needle. I'm trying to make the tail small so that the whole tail goes right inside the head. If it plugged strangely, I just pulled it straight out and tried again. I'm using a little bit of water to try and keep those fibres together as well. It was definitely fiddly. I used a little water to try and encourage the curl back into its natural form. This is how I cut needles. I've never used bought reroute needles, just at an angle with a strong pair of wire cutters. Cut the tip off, and there you go, you've got your reroute needle. So once I'd done the hairline, and I was rerouting the body of the hair rather than rooting the lock like in a row I'd kind of root each lock in kind of like a circular patch. It's a little bit easier here if there's not a hole close enough that you want to put it through then you can just put it straight through the vinyl of the head.
I loved how the reroute looked when it was done with these kind of uneven, really tight locks. I just thought it looked beautiful. Didn't stay like this though. I'll explain in a, a little bit. I used quite a wet PVA glue here. Um, and I just wanted to show you like quite how much glue I put inside her head. I'm making sure to squish it around. This is to try and get the glue to coat all the plugs. Basically what we want to do is just get it all gluey and tangly in there so it stays in. Again, I'm using the screwdriver just to try and touch all the hair in there to make sure there's some glue on it. And if you think you've got enough glue, you haven't put some more in. You can really, really fill up the head because glue is not as voluminous when it's dry, right? I covered her hair with a sock like usual to do the face up. I don't recommend a sock to do this though. I'll show you later why and what happened. Maybe try with cling film or something, but this was a big problem. I've only ever done uh, one person of color before and I don't think she looked like a black woman when I was done. I think she looked Indian. I think she looked stunning, but it wasn't what I was aiming for. So. I made sure to look at a lot of reference during this. I especially looked for um, black women with pastel hair colours for reference and when I was doing that I found um, a model on Instagram, she's massively famous, I'm not really sure how you say her name, I think it's Niani. She's so incredibly beautiful um, and I took inspiration from her when I was doing this face up there's no way she can look like the model because the face shape is completely different. The model is um, quite slender and um, monster high faces are, are quite round. I wanted the eye shape to be similar to, to Niani's. She has almond eyes they're so beautiful but it's not a shape that I usually draw on dolls I tend to do turned down eyes so I wasn't used to seeing this on a doll and I wasn't confident with doing it I really struggled with this face up um, I, I do with most actually to be fair I hate them for so long until I talk to other people and have a, a rest on it and then also and I hate to say this but um, the feedback I get on social media as well I am very dependent on other people's opinions as well and I don't know if I always get truthful feedback. I would always open, um, want open and honest feedback but I don't know that it, it did make me feel a bit more confident about the face up. I knew that I wanted to give her brown eyes. I think this is something in dolls that we very very rarely see so it's something that I actually do want to do more just very very deep brown eyes so I looked at um, lots of reference for this as well when I was doing the face up I found and I find this quite a lot that the colors were taking better on one side than the other I was much more easily blend uh, building up color on the right hand side of her face not really sure why this is I've previously thought that it could be do to do with how I spray the sealant because I'm right-handed and hold the head in my left hand not really sure in some of Niani's photos she had um, like a a gradient lip I think it's called so with like a darker vermilion border and then um, much paler on the inside so I wanted to try doing that when I was highlighting the doll I found that if I used um, white she just looked ashy and gross so I needed to use actually quite a bright yellow for her highlights 
to avoid that. I gave her rosy pink blush because I think this is quite a big thing in cottagecore, like uh, rosy, rosy tones and like dusky pinks. I'm trying to blush a bit less on dolls like I used to do it a lot um, do face blushing which then meant that I would struggle to match the body so I'm trying to keep the blushing mostly to the center of the face and not do so much of it when you see that massive white brush that's me brushing the blush off I'm also trying to do a bit greyer in the eyes than I usually do. So my holy grail right now is brows. I don't think my brows are great and I've seen some stunning brows on Monster High and that's really what I'm trying to improve and I did get some compliments on this doll's brows which I'm super happy about. Un like unprovoked somebody said that the brows were really good so I was really really happy. I splashed out on some Perlex pigments. This one is, I think it's a rose gold one, um, and I decided to use it in kind of blush places, but also as like kind of an eyeshadow and lip colour. I found that I did have to go back in and draw the eyelid definition on top of the Perlex, and I did go in with metallic watercolour later as well. Right now I'm using gouache to add texture to her lips. I find that if I add texture here and then blush over it, it makes it look less stark and more natural. She looks kind of dehydrated here. I also used the gouache to draw the eyebrow hairs. Less is more here for sure. Um, the next doll I did after this, I kind of overdid it and her brows look a little bit weird. using more gouache to redefine some lines. I use the hair cover sock to wipe away mistakes as well. And then add eye highlights. So because there's not um, a lot going on in her irises, it's gonna be the, um, the hi highlights and the eye shines that really stand out with this doll. I was kind of between doing her pastel eyebrows and brown eyebrows. I really like how they looked. I'm kind of curious to see how it would have looked with pastel eyebrows that would m match her hair. So for her eye shines, I tried with the white pencil first and then in the end I decided to use a metallic blue colour. I was looking at quite a lot of eye shines and noticed that there tends to be some blue and then some bright white and I guess this is because what's generally refle reflecting in eyes is the sky. 
whether it's from a window or the actual sky. I think I want to tone down my eye shines a little bit and I think I want to move where I was putting them. I'm using a wet brush to re-wet the colour that I've put on to then wipe off. I stopped highlighting lashes but I decided to do it on this doll and I'm really glad I did because I do think it adds something. And I added some light strokes to her eyebrows as well. In some of Niani's makeup looks, she has these really beautiful freckles. And they kind of look like an outline. So I knew to do this that you need to put like quite a big wet freckle on, allow it to dry for a little bit and then lift it off again. I found sometimes I'd be smudging them, but I can just like wet them and then take the whole thing off and start again. I also found that I, if I added some freckles in like rose gold, it ended up blending pretty well and looking kind of like a natural skin texture. I'm also varying the colors of the freckles. And then more rose gold shimmer over the top. So much rose gold shimmer. Rather than glossing lips, recently I really enjoy using a metallic watercolour on them and then just leaving them because it gives them a more natural sheen. So when I took the sock off her hair, it was completely matted. I had to detangle it with a pin and a tangle teaser. So I made this green dress for her. I will be making the pattern available on my Etsy and making a separate video for this if you're interested. All of my patterns are available for free for my $5 and above tier patrons. I was asked a lot about these tiny buttons, they're in my affiliate links down in the description box. This cardigan I've already made a separate video for and the pattern's available on my Etsy. It's made out of a pair of socks.
These boots I found from a seller on eBay. I sanded some of the texture off and then decided to use the rest of the texture. Um, I painted them and then highlighted the mould and some of the texture and then later added shadows. I painted the laces and the eyelets but I lost footage of that I'm afraid. This is for the petticoat. I've been asked before how to get even gathers. This is one way. Um, it works pretty well. So I'm marking this in four sections. You could do as many sections as you want. I feel like four is manageable. And then I'm marking those with the thread on my fabric. I've also marked them on the lace. And then I'm pinning that middle one. Then the quarter point. And the edge. And then the same on the other side. That little white thread in my left hand is a running stitch that I've already put through that lace. I haven't pulled it together yet. We're leaving that until later. So once that's pinned and I know those um, points are even, then I'm pulling together, making sure the pins stay where they're up, they are. Then I'm manipulating the fabric and just pulling it around to make those gathers more even and then pinning that again. I think the key to even gathers is quite a lot of pins and I tend to hand stitch gathers like this rather than putting them under my machine because I find the foot can push them out of their gather. I'm giving that thread another pull to make sure that the fabric is as gathered as it will get. Be careful, make sure that you've anchored the thread at one end either with a knot or with some back stitches. And then I'm sewing that down with a running stitch. Same again for the second row of lace. Right sides together, I sewed the back closed. Again, just with a running stitch. To make tiny little balls of wool, I glued one end of an embroidery floss inside a wooden bead and then wrapped the embroidery floss around. 
Once I'd gotten most of it covered, I then did it by hand to make it look uneven like a ball of yarn. I found this hat on eBay and I made these roses using Miss Maria Customs method that's on Instagram, she's linked below. I sewed those through the straw of the hat. I think I wanted to add more embroidery to this but I started like completely shredding the straw so I, I had to stop. I embroidered this ribbon through to look like leaves and then I needed to add some French knots so I used my needlepoint book to find how to do that. Added lots of French knots. It was still missing something so I decided to add some crystals. Looks like a mess inside, it's okay. And then I dressed her. I made the socks using the pattern in the tutorial that I made available on my channel. I'll link it. I then cut the foot off the socks so that they would fit underneath the boots.
I really want this doll to have her own little cottage like she's cute as she is but I feel like she needs the context so I made a lot of miniatures I'm gonna do a separate video showing those miniatures how I made them and then showing the setting as well let me know what you thought to, about this doll how do you feel about cottagecore I like literally lived in a cottage I was cottagecore life for a bit it wasn't what I expected cottagecore is not for me love the aesthetic don't like the lifestyle thanks again for watching like subscribe share patrons in the description box come hang out with me on instagram i'm very active over there love you all thank you so much bye